Welcome guys, today we're going to do the poem which is learn how to speak. That is the topic of the poem by Jeremy Conin. The topic of the poem is to learn how to speak. That is the topic of the poem. So we're going to summarize the whole poem bit by bit. I'm going to summarize the whole poem. So guys, let's start about the poem. Let's talk about the poet for, for a minute. Inevitably, Conan background had a profound influence on his literal works. Therefore, to know his personal background helps us understand his poem. Jeremy Conan was born on 12th September 1949 in Devon and has the son of the naval officer. He was raised in a middle class white family in Simon's town in the Cape Peninsula. He studied at the University of Cape Town, where he later became a lecturer in political science. He was arrested in 1976 at 26 years of age, charged, convicted, and sentenced to seven years in jail for aiding the ANC and SACP then banned organization, as well as preparing and distributing pamphlets on behalf of this organization. So that was about the poet. So now we are going to about the poem. The message of the poem is mainly that the South Africans should be tolerant, understand each other's culture and respect each other's language for a good of our country. The poem expresses the wish to be able to write a poem in, la in the language that the masses of South Africans, the ordinary people, can understand and a poem which will lead to better South Africa, to a better understanding of experiences of these masses. He does want to write a poetry in a language that will enable him to communicate with the ordinary people of the country a language that will include rather that exclude ordinary people. The poem is an expression of an eagerness by an individual to learn and to speak and write the language of the particular place of or country, in this case South Africa, and to celebrate the variety and beauty of that country and its people. The poem uses an extended metaphor of the land and attempts to gain understanding through listening to the sounds and observing the signs peculiar to this place and then learn how to speak with them too. So now you guys know what, what the poem is about. So now we are going to the type of poem. So this is the type of poem. It is a lyrical poem written in free verse. So now we are going to the structure of the poem. The poem consists of 33 lines divided into two stanzas. The lines are relatively short. She begins the poem with the two line refrain and closes each with the same refrain with the mirror change. The land, line 2, changes to this land in line 33. This, that is the structure of the poem, guys. It consists of 33 lines divided into two stanzas. The lines are relatively short. So another thing is that each infinitive is an intensification of emotions. It also implies that an action needs to be taken. So that is the structure of the poem as a whole. So moving on to the title of the poem. Title of the poem. The title introduces his desires to learn not only to understand and speak the languages of the people of South Africa, but also to understand its people and their heritage. I'm going to repeat again. The title introduces his desires to learn not only to understand and speak the languages of the people of South Africa, but also to understand its people and their heritage. This is Themes Understanding and appreciating the language. The poem emphasizes the struggle to learn the languages of the black and white people in the country. Admiration for his country. 
The poem captures a sense of the history, landscape and culture of South Africa and expresses the speaker's commitment to our people and this land. Journey in history. Our ancestors literally migrated in groups to new parts of the country. Speech, identity and home. To the speaker, his search for belonging is like learning to speak again. Speech of the poem. The explicit message of the poem is the desire the poet has to learn to speak and write poetry in a language that comes from the land and all its people. This way he will be understood and able to communicate with everybody. In order to do so effectively, we need to have respect for the diverse heritage that this part of our physical and cultural landscape. This is also included in the poem. Note that in the poem, language has both a literal and a figurative meaning. Literal in terms of the specific words used to communicate. Figurative in the sense of understanding and respecting one another's cultural diversity. Tone of the poem. Tone. The tone of the poem is reflective, deeply thoughtful, intensive, intensely serious and sincere. There is also a tone of pride and amazement. He celebrates diversity in his country and is proud to be part of the world and heritage of this land. Analysis Stanza 1 Now guys, we are going deep in the poem now. Going to explain each and everything in the poem stanza by stanza stanza one so please listen carefully stanza one the poem is an expression of the speech eagerness to learn to speak and understand the different languages of particular places of count or countries in this case south africa the poem uses an extended metaphor of land and refers to attempts to gain understanding of the particular language by listening to its sounds and observing the sights unique to this land, and then learn to speak like its people. Keep in mind that each time the poet uses the infinitive to he implies that he wants to learn. Line 1 Line 1 and 2 so guys, we are focusing focusing on line one and two. Learn implies an eagerness to pro procure knowledge and thus progress. Voices refers to the different people culture in this land and the variety of the languages they speak. It is necessary for South Africans to learn to use expressions even the languages of this land so that we can communicate with one another and remain loyal to and proud of that which is truly South African. Voices of the land can also refer to the different ways that the different language speakers express themselves though. Their different pronunciation of words, their intonation, the rise and fall of the voice in speaking, their choice of words because of their political and cultural heritage and even through their singing. Personification The land is personified as a person who speaks the language of the country. A country slash land does not have a voice to speak with. It is, people, it is the people living in the country that speak in the variety of the language found there. Line 3 In the study of the languages, to praise is to divide a sentence into grammatical parts and identify the parts and their relations to each other. Example, to analyze the words in the sentence in an effort understanding them and thus work out the meaning of what is being said. The speaker expresses the wish to fully describe and understand the black and African people's way of speaking. 
He wants to learn how to speak these languages. Metaphor. To pause the speech in its rivers refers to the flow of the language from the person's mouth. People's words flow from their mouths when they are speaking, just as water is flowing in a river. In this line, the speaker talks of breaking down what he hears in the flow rivers of people's speech and attempting to understand the separate parts of their sentences. Line 4. This is line 4, guys. Line 4. Catch implies that he is on his own while learning these languages. No one teaches him. He simply places himself near the speaker and speaks up catches bits of speech which are at times unclear to him. He however tries to interpret what he hears to the best of his ability. Inarticulate is a word that describes poor communication skills. It implies that one lacks the ability to express oneself, especially in a clear and effective speech that can be understood by others. Hard to understand the meaning. Example, not being able to express what you want to say. The word grat. Inarticulate sound. One can hear the sound, but it is hard to get and understand the meaning. This word emphasizes his inability to make sense of the words he hears. To use foreign ears. This language, these language sounds are read incomprehensible and he tries his best to interpret what he hears. The line furthermore refers to the speaker also picking up on people's emotions when they choose to use sounds which in itself has meaning rather than words like a grant. When a person Reluctantly agrees. He makes his animal like sound in his throat and through his nose at the same time. Line 5. This is line 5, guys. These words present the beginning steps of the baby learning to speak or of a student learning a new language. They also describe the way these languages sound to the speaker's foreign ears, mostly in, incomprehensible. Stammer. Speak with difficulty, with sudden involuntary pauses, stumble over words, speak haltingly, hesitantly. Call, cry, loud isolated involuntary sounds, no logical sequence like in a complete sentence. Babble. Babies babble before they can talk. They utter a meaningless confusion of the word sounds. In context, it means to talk foolishly of the chat. This also describes what these foreign languages sound like to him. It creates confusion. Tone uses in this line in, in comprehension. This tone indicates that the speaker is experiencing difficulty with speech. Metaphor, tongues not, the human tongue used in this in speech is compared to a, a trend or tight knot. If you have a knot in your tongue, the figurative meaning is that you cannot speak properly. The poet is saying that we are inarticulate, just as it's difficult to untie a knot it is sometimes difficult to untie or learn a new language. Line 6 and Line 7 Learning a, a language is a lengthy process, as is the weathering of stone. In South Africa, it is difficult to learn the different languages and un to understand them. The process is compared to the way in which a stone is cut or weathered. To cut anything from stone takes time and patience. It is, it is a difficult, time-consuming process from which all words are cut. 
the speaker acknowledges that all languages or tongues come from one rigid stone and are cut as seen fit by different nationalities. The cutting of these stones can be seen as a difficult process that a person has to go through to be able to communicate well in any newly learned language. Alliteration The repetition of the S sound that imitates a hissing sound, it emphasizes the difficulty and frustration from the Englishman, Cronin, to speak and understand the language of the black and white people. The speaker associates with white people in the poem with the African's language. Line it. Alliteration. The repetition of the T sound emphasizes the language journey the speaker has to undertake if he wants to learn and understand the language used by this group of people. This refers to Afrikaans. Wagons are traditionally known as transportation method used by the Vetrekens Dutch speaking people who migrated by wagon from the Cape Colony inland from 1836 onwards referred to as the Great Trend. Wagon trails literally refers to the marks made by the wheels of the wagon in the sand. In the poem it refers to the movement of the tongue as it forms words or sounds. Wagon trails can also refer to the metaphorical roads or journeys that people undertake when they learn about the history, culture, and language of, peop of other people. Metaphor To trace with the tongue wagon trails, the movement of the tongue in the mouth when forming weight is compared to the movement of the wagon which leaves trails to the sand. Line 9. Suffix. A suffix is added to the end of the weight to form another weight. The suffixes he mentions are all part of the African language. H is used metaphor metaphorically. The journey itself was difficult and it refers to the struggle of these people to find water. These words are African words that are combined with other words to form the names of places. It refers to the arrival of the Vortgerekens in South Africa and their search for water. Kal, the word means the same as pool. Pen, the word means the lake. Fountain, the word means fountain. Note. The language of people reveals something about their history. It implies that the journey was very difficult and the names they gave to places reflected their suffering, but also their hope for the, for the future of finding water. Line 10 and 11. Antithesis. The watery names they used when naming places indicates the importance of water to the ver to the word records and their constant search for a proper water source, dryness. Antithesis, dryness of their ways. The names they use for places are fluid, watery, while the ways or perhaps traditions of these people are said to be rigid and conservative. They were God fearing people but unimaginative and stuck in their ways. The poet might refer to the unsympathetic attitudes of the white people towards him because of his political views which were regarded as unacceptable by them. The reference to water is extremely effective in contrast to the dryness of the excluding habits of the people. Water is different. It is generous, beautiful, and giving. It keeps flowing. The implication is that we must keep our own generosity and kindness flowing too. Dryness is a reference to the boat, to both the dry landscape through which they traveled and to the nature of the boat wreckers.
They were more than simple people set in their ways and had an ironic sense of humor. Irony. The names of what Rekes gave to places often referred to water, but the locations were very dry. This could reflect their idealism, sense, sense of hope, or their lodging, lodging to find wood. Line 12 and 13. Line 12 and 13. The speaker says that there is a use of words that refers to what is hidden. It implies that same aspects of language are not obvious or clear and require deeper searching and involvement to understand. Occlusion. It is a blockage as in the string, but also a closing of vocal chords in speaking. The poet uses words of speaking and language. So occlusion could refer to the difficulty of communicating. Places of occlusion. It could refer to somebody being excluded from the conversation of the others because of a lack of understanding the other people's language. This might also refer to the absence of speaking. When no words are spoken, one has to zoom in or other methods of communication, body language, facial expression, inarticulate sounds. Reminds us of the sec salt link which is a deposit of mineral salts that animals use to supplement their n nutrition. Many farmers use a salt link for their animals. It is a weight which emphasizes the use of the tongue, the use of the tongue in speaking. When the sun rises, the use of the link reminds us the ta of the tongue which we use to communicate. Vile bang. It is a low-lying land which is flooded in wet seasons. A swamp. This is a compound noun using both Africans word well and the bank the bank which is in English. It refers to the Africans and English both spoken in South Africa at the time. The veil bank image links up with other words about about water and water is fluid life giving and flexible like proper communication should be. Line 14 and line 15. To bury. The speaker talks about burying his mouth in the armpit of the land. Example, a place where secrets are tucked away perhaps. In the context of the poem, the secret to understanding and speaking a language fully. It emphasizes both difficult and both difficult of learning and acquiring a new language and the real desire to do so. He implies that here are so many secrets one has to work through and understand before one can achieve eventual success. The speaker is thus expressing his desire to embrace the language and culture of this country in spite of its hardship. Alliteration, the P alliteration is used. It links pit with planetarium and pentorium thus moving us from the earth to the stars. Metaphor Pit of your arm refers to tan shaped hollow understand the arm at the sh shoulder. It links with the reference to planetarium which is also dome shaped. It is a building in which images of suns and moons, suns, moons, stars and planets are projected. A place where the position and the movement of the planet and stars are studied, a place from where the universe can be understood by looking at the stars. It is a planetarium that you realize that you are a very small part in the infinity universe comprehending a new language is a difficult and overpowering as understanding the universe. Line 16, line 17. Pectoral, relating to the chest or breast, proceeding from the heart or inner 
consciousness coming from the breast and or heart as seat of emotion. Numb refers to the most important part, the essence of the core of something, the lamp, gist or point. Pretoral numb of time, where time started inside the human chest. The speaker says that getting to know your country and its language brings you to a better understanding of, of this and political events taking place at the, the specific time. Just like one can get a better understanding of the universe by spending time in a planetarium. Line 14 and 16 refers to a person experiencing a closeness to his country and its language. It brings him to a better understanding of its unique qualities, makes him understand its speakers better and helps him understand how it fits in with the universe at large. The water table is, is the level at which water can be found below ground. Example, understanding water metaphorically, it refers to deep down at the bank of the throat, of the back of the throat. When you are close to the water table, you are close to the center of the earth, in touch with the heart of your hand. These lines and the previous two might also refer to the need of the speaker to connect with the earth and the origin of the humankind as such. Line 17, line 18, line 19. Drums and distinctive, distinctive sounds associated from associated with African continent. The reference to drums may be the start of revealing the location of the land as Africa or South Africa. The word drum is used as a verb here, a symbol of African culture. This refer reference to something unique African is meant to make the reader aware of the importance of his own history. If the moon and the sounds of, the, of Africa are familiar and dear to you, then you are learning how to speak in the language of the land. Metaphor Full Moon my throat, the full moon at the back of the throat is a reference to the tongue. It is used to make deep, resounding, plosive sounds like a drum. It links with the idea of the vowel formed in the back of the throat. Just by uttering the weight, full moon, aloud, he can feel the vowel sound vibrate in his throat just like a vibrating sound caused by striking on the drum and be heard and felt. Line 20 The word cow skinned links with the images of the link and valley. The word cow skinned is a reference to the top part of the African drum on which the player beats with his hands. Metaphor, cow skin vowel, the sound of the vowel that is formed in the back of the throat is compared to the sound of the cowhide drum of the African cows. These are African sounds made by African instruments. It refers to the African language spoken in South Africa. The different people of the country pronounce words differently which forms part of the cultural uniqueness. The full moon that, that drums at the back of the throat refers to the more explosive sounds that African language speakers use when they talk. Line 21 Line 21 and, two, and line 22 With line 21, the poem moves to more modern times and closer to cities, specifically Johannesburg. It seems to move from nature and the outdoors to township lingo, speech, and the occurrences during heated political times in South Africa. In lines 21 to 24, the poet refers to the language used when writing the poetry. The question is asked whether the poetry cannot be drawn from the real life items that people use in the country, including this in the poetry makes a poem male and authentic because it is a true reflection of the country and its people. The poet makes it clear that he wants to learn to write a poem using the language of the ordinary people, the masses of the South Africans. 
After the colon, the speaker introduces a list of typical South African colloquial phrases commonly used. I'm telling you, is a typical slang and colloquial expression used in South Africa. These lines and the next two draw our attention to the language used by the people he is trying to communicate with. Line 23 and line 24. The words in these two lines suggest the typical colloquial expression used in South Africa. They emphasize the South African diversity and also languages start to merge. Stompy. And Africans wait for cigarettes, but a stump of a vine, reminder of an amputated leg nickname for a short person. Stick fast means to get stuck. This is a direct translation from the Africans' word vestek. Golovan is a mind trolley of the cocoa pen, which is a small tip stuck track on rails, which is used in the mines. The word has close association with Fanangalo, which is a simplified language based primarily on Zulu. With English and small Africans input, Fanangalo is used as a lingua franc. Example, a language that is adopted as a common language between speakers whose native languages are different, mainly in gold, diamond and coal, gold, diamond, coal and copper mining industries. Songololo, a Zulu and Kosa way that means to roll up it is merely penned in English or they sell to pot in Africans. Just boom bang. An informal phrase describing a loud sound and explosive noise the way some things happen usually fast. Line 25. To understand the list inflections. It's line 25. Inflections. This is a language studies is the way a word is pronounced to convey different meanings. Slight changes in intonation or tone of voice affect the meaning of words. Example, the rise and fall of the voice and tone used. He says he wants to learn to be able to learn to hear the slightest least. Differences in meaning suggested by the way words are uttered and to speak the language of the ordinary people properly. Being able to pronounce the words or parts of the words properly. If we truly want to understand the language of this country and learn to speak the voice of this land, we have to become sensitive and not only to what a person says, but also how he uses the pitch of his voice, because they add a new level of meaning to his sounds. Figuratively, it refers to the fact that we must make an effort to understand the smallest change in tone that affects the meaning. Line 26 Line t- Line 26 The speaker expresses the desire that the reader should con- see, consciously acknowledge the different ways that people speak. In the some black languages, people speak with strong voices, pronouncing each syllable they speak clearly. However, in Africans or English, some sounds in words are swallowed and not pronounced. All South Africans should detect these differences, acknowledge them and identify with them so that they can understand and speak like people whose language it is. Line 27, line 28, line 29. When people from different ethnic Groups come together to live near a town, they evolve a different kind of language, borrowing words, and so made it possible for them to understand each other by allowing the language to evolve. The speaker says, syllables born in tin shakes to refer to this. Syllables being the parts of words they had and then used, see then, the next line, equata pass five. 
as an example. Syllables. Words can be split into syllables or beats. The poet is going to introduce the ways black people pronounce certain English words. The word shacks refers to the township environment and the language used by black people. 5.15. This is a time reference indicating the time when people go to work. Equata pas fife schwanisbeck. A reference to a specific train that is probably taking people to and from work. Equata pas fife. Quarter past five. Schwanisbeck, which is Johannesburg. Line 29 and the line date to reach. These are mine workers, they take the train to and from work. Chat refers to the rhyme, make phrase, phrases, phrase, typically one shouted and sung in unison by crowd. To chat means to sing in unison and the strength of the common people during the era of the apartheid come from this. They derive great comfort and strength from singing and doing things together. The singing of people also reveals something of their heritage. Black people typically sing or chat while working. It relieves the boredom and gives them the ability to enjoy hardship. Line 31, mineral glow of our people's unbreakable resolve, which is line 31. Minerals are basical elements and they refer to what the miners are, were extracting gold, platinum, diamonds, etc., which are very strong. In linking this to unbreakable resolve, the speaker is indicating how strong the determination is to stand together and fight the current oppression of the apartheid regime. Mineral glow. Minerals with phosphorescence can grow can grow for a brief time after the light source is turned off. It may refer to these minerals in mines or simply to the gold mine at the time. The settling of the poem now moves to the time of the struggle against the oppressive system of the apartheid. Metaphor Mineral glow and procurable resolve. Resolve means to settle or find a solution to a contentious matter. To find or f to fix or find an answer to. To make up one's mind or reach a decision metaphorically he speaks of the decision of the people not to give in the into expression, oppression and harassment. Our the people of the country are referred to as our people. By choosing this way, the speaker includes himself or aligns himself with them. He supports them. Our people, it is uncertain to which people the speaker is referring. Taking his background and the time he spent in jail, it is may be a reference to the determination of the black people in South Africa to strive from for freedom during the apartheid years. Unbreakable resolve refers to the film determination to do something having a purposefulness, a single mind mindedness, a strength of will not to give in to something. Stanza two line thirty two repetition line thirty two and thirty three is a repetition of lines. 1 and 2 with only a slight shift in the emphasis. The first two and the last two lines are the same in form. They ref a reframe a regular recurring phase, phrase of verse, especially at the end of each stanza or division of the poem. The function of the refrain is the emphasis a certain point of idea. It emphasizes a certain point of idea. In this case, the desire to learn the different languages in South Africa. This poem captures a sense of history, landscape, and culture of, of South Africa. It highlights the, the multi-dual character of this beautiful country. 
line 33 the speaker makes it clear that he is not only only wants to learn the language but specifically wants to speak with the same voices that are part of this land he wants to speak about the issues that pertinent to the land the land line 2 changes to this land this is more specific this is not just any land it is the land he currently in his own country the speaker recognizes that this is the country he is present in the fundamental part of a south africa in essentially part of him the last two lines are, are an appeal to us to learn how to speak like south africans and to have respect for the diverse diverse heritage that is part of our physical and cultural landscape his wish is to learn to speak like and to ordinary people in this everyday language and so become one with them so guys this is all the summary and the analysis of the poem to learn how to speak so guys so guys don't forget to subscribe and share the video and like the video the poem has been summarized the poem is but is The poem is written by Jeremy Cronin. So guys, subscribe, like the video. And